Welcome to a webcast made by the Learning Enhancement Team based in the Dean of Students Office at the University of East Anglia. This webcast is part of the Steps into Calculus series and concerns basics of partial differentiation. This guide introduces the concept of differentiating a function of two variables by using partial differentiation. It will explain what a partial derivative is and how to do partial differentiation. Introduction Partial differentiation is used to differentiate functions which have more than one variable in them. It is more general than differentiating functions of one variable, which is known as ordinary differentiation, and is introduced in the study guide, What is Differentiation? Partial differentiation can be used for finding maxima and minima in optimization, and for describing more complicated processes in science in what are known as partial differential equations. See study guide, Basics of Differential Equations. The first functions you encounter are usually functions of one variable, y equals f of x, as described in the study guide using functions. For example, the function y equals f of x equals x squared takes a value x as its input, squares it and outputs it. The graph of this function is given by the xy coordinates that satisfy the equation y equals x squared and the gradient of this function is dy by dx equals 2x which comes from differentiating x squared using the power rule. See study guide differentiating y equals ax to the m. In other words the rate of change of y with respect to x will be 2x. This sort of differentiation is called ordinary differentiation. Functions can depend on more than one variable. A function with two variables can be written as z equals fxy and has partial derivatives with respect to x or y. For a function of two variables z equals fxy, the partial derivative with respect to x is written as partial z with respect to partial x the partial derivative with respect to y is written as partial z with respect to partial y. Here you can see that partial derivatives are written with a curly d which looks like this and not with a Latin letter d which is used to write a derivative in functions of one variable. An alternative notation is the subscript notation where partial z with respect to partial x equals z subscript x and partial f with respect to partial y is written as f subscript y. An example of a function with two variables is z equals x squared plus y squared minus 16 in which z depends on both x and y. You need to supply two inputs in order to get one output. The graph of this function is then z equals x squared plus y squared minus 16 which is a three-dimensional surface like a bowl. You could ask, what is the gradient of this surface? To find this, do you differentiate with respect to x or y? Unlike a function of one variable, how the function changes will depend on which variable is altered. Imagine walking down a hill. The gradient is steeper if you walk straight down the hill and less steep if you take a longer route by going down at an angle. In other words, the gradient of the function will depend on which direction you choose. For a function of two variables, you could choose either the x direction or the y direction, and so there are two gradients. These are given by the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. In this example, z is a function of two variables, x and y, which are independent. Partial differentiation should not be confused with implicit differentiation of the implicit function x squared plus y squared minus 16 equals 0, for example, where y is considered to be a function of x and therefore not independent of x. See the study guide, Implicit Differentiation, for more on this. Partial differentiation can be applied to functions of more than two variables, but for simplicity, the rest of this study guide deals with functions of two variables, x and y. 
How to do partial differentiation. Partial differentiation builds on the concepts of ordinary differentiation. And so you should be familiar with the methods introduced in the Steps into Calculus series before you proceed. In fact, for a function of one variable, the partial derivative is the same as the ordinary derivative. Example, find the partial derivatives of z equals 3x squared. The function is really only a function of x, and so partial z with respect to partial x equals 6x, which is the same as the ordinary derivative, since dz by dx equals 6x2. The function does not depend on y, and so it does not change as y changes, and so dz by dy equals 0. In general, however, for a function z equals fxy, partial z by partial x is found by keeping y constant and differentiating as usual with respect to x. Partial z with respect to partial y is found by keeping x constant and differentiating as usual with respect to y. To help with partial differentiation, it is very helpful to remember a rule from ordinary differentiation, which are discussed in the study guide, differentiating y equals x to the n. If y equals a fx plus b, where a and b are constants, then dy by dx equals a multiplied by f dash of x. So that constants, such as b, when added to functions, differentiate to zero, but constants multiplying functions, such as a, are retained, and so still multiply the derivative. If you are partially differentiating with respect to x, for example, then the variable y is kept constant, and so must be treated as a or b in the rules above. Also, since it is being treated as a constant, functions of y, such as y squared, 8y or sine y are also treated as constants and so act as if they were a or b in the rule above. Example, find the first partial derivatives of z equals x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 4y plus 14. To find the partial derivative with respect to x, you can split this into three parts x squared minus 6x is a function of x only, and so partially differentiates to 2x minus 6. y squared minus 4y is a function of y only, and so is treated as a constant, and so differentiates to 0. 14 is a constant, and so differentiates to 0. And so, partial z with respect to partial x equals 2x minus 6. To find the partial derivative with respect to y, you can split this into three parts. x squared minus 6x is a function of x only, and so is treated as a constant, and so differentiates to 0. y squared minus 4y is a function of y only, and so partially differentiates to 2y minus 4. 14 is a constant, and so differentiates to 0, and so partial z with respect to partial y equals 2y minus 4. Example, find the first partial derivatives of z equals x squared multiplied by y cubed. To find partial z by partial x, you must treat y as a constant. Then it is the same as ordinary differentiation of the function ax squared, except that the constant a is actually y cubed. And so, partial z by partial x equals 2x multiplied by y cubed. To find dz by dy, you must treat x as a constant. Then it is the same as ordinary differentiation of a function such as a y cubed, except that the constant a is actually x squared. And so, partial z by partial y equals 3x squared multiplied by y squared. Gradients. The graph of the function from the last but one example, z equals x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 4y plus 14, is a parabolic surface, a bowl, as shown below. As you have seen in the previous section, a partial derivative is obtained by holding one of the variables constant. 
if x is held constant, say x equals 5, for example, as shown in the graph above, then the function is a quadratic function in y only. z equals 5 squared minus 6 multiplied by 5 plus y squared minus 4y plus 14, which equals y squared minus 4y plus 9, which is a quadratic function. So its graph is a 2D parabola. The graph on the left shows the cross section of the parabolic surface taken at x equals 5. Where it intersects the surface is the 2D parabola. The gradient of this parabola is given by partial z with respect to partial y equals 2y minus 4, which was calculated in the example from before. If y is held constant, then the function will become a quadratic in x, with a gradient partial z with respect to partial x equals 2x minus 6, as calculated in the second example in this guide. Higher derivatives. Just as with functions of one variable, functions of many variables can be differentiated more than once to obtain second, third or higher partial derivatives such as partial 2z with respect to partial x squared or partial 3z with respect to partial y cubed. For the function z equals fxy, partially differentiating the first derivative again using the partial differential operator gives the second derivatives with respect to x or y. Partial x of partial z with respect to partial x equals partial 2z divided by partial x squared and partial y with respect to partial z with respect to partial y equals partial 2z with respect to partial y squared. These are very similar to the ordinary differentiation case. See study guide the differential operator for an explanation of this. However, for multivariable functions, these are not the only kinds of second derivative. For multivariable functions, it is also possible to partially differentiate with respect to different variables, and these are called mixed derivatives. So the function z equals f of xy may be partially differentiated with respect to x and then y, or with respect to y and then x. The partial derivative with respect to y of the partial derivative with respect to z with respect to x equals partial 2z with respect to partial y partial x and partial derivative with respect to x of the partial derivative of z with respect to y equals partial 2z with respect to partial x partial y. Using the subscript notation the four second order partial derivatives of z can be written as z subscript xx, z subscript yy, z subscript xy, and z subscript yx. Example, find all the second order partial derivatives of the function z equals 5x cubed multiplied by y squared. First, find the two partial derivatives partial z with respect to partial x and partial z with respect to partial y and then partially differentiate these with respect to x and y to find the second partial derivatives. The second partial derivative of z with respect to x, partial 2z with respect to partial y partial x, partial 2z with respect to partial x partial y and the second partial derivative of z with respect to y. The diagram below shows you how this is done. Arrows going right are partial differentiation with respect to y and arrows going left are partial differentiation with respect to x. So, start with z equals 5 x cubed y squared. Differentiating partially with respect to x to the left gives partial z with respect to partial x equals 15 x squared y squared. Differentiating with respect to y to the right gives partial z with respect to partial y equals 10 x cubed y. Now start with the partial derivative with respect to x and differentiate this with respect to x 
So to the left, you get the second partial derivative with respect to x equals 30xy squared. Now, differentiating the first partial derivative with respect to x with respect to y, to the right, you get partial 2z with respect to y with respect to x equals 30x squared y. Now, partially differentiating the first partial derivative with respect to y with respect to y, to the right, you get the second partial derivative of z with respect to y equals 10x cubed. Now, differentiating the first partial derivative with respect to y with respect to x, you get partial 2z with respect to partial x partial y equals 30x squared y. You can see that the two mixed derivatives are equal. In fact, under certain conditions, this will always be true. This is known as Schwarz's or Young's theorem, which states that it does not matter what order partial differentiation is done. Further guidance and information. If you have any further questions about this topic, or would like to discuss any other aspects of mathematics, you can talk to your lecturer or personal advisor, or make an appointment to see a learning enhancement tutor in the Dean of Students office. Telephone 01603 592761 Email dos.help at uea.ac.uk Or you can visit our website www.uea.ac.uk forward slash dos forward slash let There are further resources on many other aspects of mathematics, statistics and science available from the Dean of Students Office and on its website. These include questions to practice, model solutions and webcasts illustrating essential skills.